It's the Young Turks 14 years. Hello and welcome to this very special edition of Young Turks. I have with me Mr. Charles Rivkin, the US Assistant Secretary of State for Economic and Business Affairs, and also a group of young Indian startups who are building innovative businesses out of India but really for the world. And that brings us to what Jackson is doing with the Grand Slam Baseball uh, League in uh, India. What was the starting point for you to do this? And uh, what have been some of the synergies in working uh, with the U.S. Embassy here in India to get this off the ground? Sure. Well, before answering that, I just want to say, Mr. Rifkin, it's very exciting to have you here as an American who's lived in India for 18 years. Really why we started baseball over here was not to challenge cricket, but um, to create opportunities that may not exist for Indians at the moment. Cricket is a very competitive space where you have a national side with only 11 players, but an entire country with that dream. Uh, whereas baseball provides opportunities to study abroad, have careers abroad. Um, at our leagues alone, they come to the United States Embassy every Saturday and they're able to play alongside 15 different countries, really get a sense of what sporting culture means in America, what it means to all the other communities that they interact with. So certainly a priority for us is to fulfill our mission before we uh, attend to our shareholders. And that, that's actually a question I had for you, Mr. Assistant Secretary, is that um, for a social enterprise like our own, where we are more concerned with growing Indian baseball rather than serving our shareholders directly. Is there a special strategy that the United States government has to deal with these sort of international partnerships? I can say that, uh, that in addition to being a social enterprise, it could be a profitable enterprise. Certainly. And, uh, and, and there's no, those aren't diametrically opposed. But what it also does is something our embassy here and, and the State Department in general cares deeply about, and that's people-to-people -people ties. You're increasing the people-to-people -people ties and the cultural um, bond that exists. And I, I was just giving a speech, actually, about, about how cricket and baseball may have different terms, but there's a lot they have in common in terms of the passion that goes into each of them. And sports, by the way, is an IP-centric business. Um, I was curious if Million Dollar Arm uh, played here and if Million Dollar Arm imp impacted what, what, you know, your thoughts and whether one way to do it uh, would be, have you talked about partnering with Major League Baseball? Certainly, and certainly Major League Baseball would want people like you in countries like this. I think they do. And Million Dollar Arm, in fact, was a big help for us. Mm -hmm. uh, that came out about two years ago and we were lucky enough to have uh, Rinku Singh, one of the players. Yeah, yeah. He's come to help us out in camps and really been a great face for Indian baseball. Hmm. Um, and it's also got the conversation started here about baseball doesn't just have to be the antithesis to cricket. Rather, it can create other opportunities using Indians' very strong skill sets because I really feel that Indians have stronger cultural capital in sports than they give themselves credit for. And we just want to create opportunities for them to flex that and really show off to the world that there are opportunities out here for Indian athletes. I think, um, I think what's really interesting now is that we are seeing Indians crave sports more than they ever have in the past. Mm. You have the success of the Indian Premier League for cricket. Uh, basketball is really taking off here, baseball as well. And what we really want to do is not just create the sport or create an, an imported version of the sport, but cultivate a very Indian culture within baseball, let it take on its own meaning locally, so that by the time players do reach the professional level in the United States, something that we are talking about with Major League clubs right now and a few NCAA clubs, we will also have a strong local culture that will give a lot more power to these players that do reach such heights. Well, maybe a corollary business could be promoting cricket in the United States. Certainly, yeah. Uh, yeah. But uh, <laughs> things that tie our cultures together, in addition to providing jobs and employment, are, 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 are wonderful. And I'm, I'm, I applaud you for, uh, for these efforts, which obviously were born out of passion. You obviously must love baseball. Completely. I, I started playing here when I was five years old, and it was the one thing that helped me feel American as a deliate. You spoke earlier about, about what makes an entrepreneur and what we have in common. And I got to believe with these four gentlemen sitting here that passion is a core criteria. Clearly, you wouldn't be doing what you're doing on baseball if you weren't passionate. And you spoke earlier about how individuals can make a difference. It's not just large buildings or large institutions, but individual actions. Finding a niche, but you obviously love it, or you wouldn't be, you wouldn't be doing it and spending all your life doing it. So on that note, thank you, Mr. Rivkin, for your time and for joining us and for having this very open conversation with all the entrepreneurs here. Thank you very much to our viewers for joining us. We'll see you next week. The Young Turks 14 years.